Hello everybody, welcome to Dakman Productions and welcome to Kalahay Rail. And today we got something new to add to the Conrail collection. And I'm pretty happy about this one. So we won't call this an unboxing, but we're gonna unbox it anyway. <laughs> so I got another great delivery from Mr. Muffins. And I know people are wondering. When I pre-order Conrail uh, rolling stock or locomotives, do I go back and make sure that it's real prototypical? Nah, I buy it just because they put the Conrail name on it and it interests me. Now, do I buy everything that has the Conrail name on it? No, absolutely not. Uh, one example would be... The Lionel Ballast Tamper in a Conrail road name. Nope, I did not buy that because I knew I would use it one time and that would be the end of it. <laughs> uh, if I'm not planning on using it more than once and put it back in my collection, then I probably won't get it. Um, but at any rate, so what did I get today? And the one thing. I've been looking forward to. As you can see, we got some big boxes. Got a pair of Atlas O Premier um, 75 foot depressed center cars. So, do you have depressed center flat cars? If so, cheer them up by adding some other cars with them. <laughs> I know, bad joke. Got some. <laughs> so, anyway, um, got two different road names of the Conrail uh, Center Depressed flat car. And uh, anybody who uh, remembers that anything that says Atlas Air Premier is the old MTH molds. And I am very happy that Atlas O has. Know, bought these molds to show everybody that they're willing to continue and sell O gauge stuff because there for a while people were wondering is that the sale going to continue or is what's going to happen here? They seem to be concentrating only on HO and N. Nope, they're arriving well and they actually invested, reinvested by buying MTH molds, so that is cool. Um, but anyway, we're going to get these out on a track. Take a look at one, and we'll see if these are real or not. Did Conrad really have the center depressed flat car, the 75 foot one? Don't know. But we're going to research this and find out. Let's go. So getting this out of the box, and all I got to say is, wow, this thing is pretty long. Um... Let me get this a little bit more straighter here. <laughs> oh man, this thing is humongous. Let's measure this thing out. I am so curious, and I'm sure you are too, how long this thing is. Alright, let's get this uh, tape measure here. And we are at... Well, it's not cooperating with me here. Eighteen and a half inches on the car body, and that doesn't even include the couplers. And as you can see, you have two sets of trucks on each end of the car. So this was meant for real serious heavy loads, uh, such as this transformer. And the reason why it was depressed was to get uh, extra height loads underneath the bridges and other obstacles that may have been in the way for stuff that was too tall. So that depressed center brought the height down uh, some, which is nice. The car itself is just the MTH carryover. I don't see really any improvements. It's the same thing that MTH, when MTH uh, was making it, basically. Um, yeah, they could have... <laughs> In my opinion, improved on the load a little bit. The load is the same generic, undetailed transformer load that 
and teach me, but we're already pushing the price. So for Mr. Muffins, these were $80.96 each. Which is pretty reasonable for what you're getting, uh, in my opinion. Uh, they sure won't last long. Now with the trucks, I'm going to have the same complaint. Uh, Non-rotating wheel bearing caps. I, I believe that's something that Atlas could have added carrying over to MTH product, but maybe in the future that's something I'll do. Also, the generic load uh, has pins on it, as you can see. You gotta line up with these holes in the, in the floor of the car body to um, get it to sit flat. Not to worry, it does come with cables to tie it down with and a nice little package. You just gotta install the cables onto your flat car. And again, this is wobbling because I don't have those pins set in the car itself. But before I put this back on, let's take a look at the truck mechanism. It has kind of an interesting truck setup. It uh, ha it pivots a single bar, and each truck uh, turns independently and pivots as well. Kind of unique uh, how how it does this. Diecast trucks, uh, diecast knuckle couplers. Metal wheels, I mean, you get the whole nine yards with uh, Atlas O oh, Premier. Here you can see the, uh, the the bed I was telling you about where you gotta line the holes up with the pins in that transformer load. What's nice about this car is that the load isn't permanently fixed, so you can put anything on here that you want to represent a heavy, oversized load. So let's take a close look up at the uh, car itself. Again, you have the uh, dual four-wheel trucks. Very cool. The Conrail lettering. Conrail insignia. And if you look over here at the end of the car, and we'll take a nice close look here. Now remember what I taught you. All Conrail equipment, oops, has model designations on them. So the model designation for this particular car that MTH, or actually at the so now used, is FE63B. That's the model designation for this car. So the closest I could come up with is for a Conrail FE63A class. And the road number of that was 766011. So it's not far off in road numbers compared to the ones that I got. So here's a picture of it. Conrail number 766011 is seen at Moline, Ohio on February 21st, 1988. The car is an X. Erie Lackawanna, number 7251, X Erie, number 7251, built in October of 1951, and was painted on uh, November of 1979. So is this the biggest depressed center flat car that Conroe has ever owned? Absolutely not. That would be Conroe number 766163 as seen in this picture. Formerly Penn Central number 766163, formerly Pennsylvania Railroad number 470245. This depressed center flat car was built by the Pennsylvania Railroad in Altoona in 1952. The car was repainted and renumbered to number 766163 after the creation of Pan Central. <laughs> now I know I have not run cars that I have reviewed in the past, but let me change that up a little bit. So I'm going to use my Lionel Conrail GP35, and there is a unique history story behind that I made on video. I'll put the link in this video description. But in the meantime, let's fire this train up and give it a run.
So I wanted to stop the train run and show you guys. This is a MTH uh, dual track portal or tunnel portal, and you see it just barely squeezes in there. But let's continue the train run. I know what people are wondering, do I buy anything other than Conrail? You know, funds are limited in this hobby. And so, I'd rather stay focused on my favorite rotary than buying a little bit of this, a little bit of that, a little bit of this, a little bit of that, and then I got a mishmash of different things. But everybody's got their own thing that they want to do for their collection. For me, pretty much sticking with Conrail. Um, I have bought Penn Central rolling stock. I do have uh, Cargill uh, in my rolling stock has road name because uh, I have a Cargill grain facility. So I do have uh, Cargill grain hoppers, tank cars, and stuff like that. And I've bought um, even rolling stock that I've seen uh, featured in museums such as the being a trailer service, the Norfolk and Western Bicentennial Hopper uh, that you've seen in my cold drag, although they don't have one, but they do have a picture of one in, at the uh, Virginia Transportation Museum. But uh, yeah, so I uh, pretty much concentrate on, other than that on Conroe stuff, unless it's like a, a local thing or something I'm already uh, collecting or something that might interest me at the time uh, and I haven't you know you can only afford so much on pre-orders and you know it gets to be too expensive if, if you just keep saying I want this 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 and this and this you gotta be for me I gotta <laughs> I gotta have some kind of discretion and uh, so yeah I'd rather just stick with Conroe and and Cargill and a couple other things and if there's nothing being made in their pre-orders and I see something I like and I have the funds then I'll go ahead and buy it. But at any rate I hope you enjoyed this video, this episode, this run and we'll catch you guys trackside. Goodbye.